Here we go. Tuesday night, Knicks. Knicks lose to the Magic 95-83 to down in the Sunshine State. Number one show for the fans by the fans. CP from Knicks Fan TV. My man Jay Ellis from the Nick of Time show. Jay Ellis, man. Tight, yo. I'm I'm tight. T- you know, <laughs> it's 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 never early for the Knicks. You know, you can't say, oh, this is early. It's it's just one game, it's just one loss, because everyone counts. Especially when you you're a struggling team and you're trying to get your chemistry together, you're trying to get it together. Yeah. This was a game uh that the Knicks could have won. Mm-hmm. And they they let it slip away, man. Uh, give give me your takeaways on on how this whole thing went down, bro. It was uh, what's the word? Anticlimactic. The whole game, the whole game was a struggle. It was a struggle yeah. to get through, definitely, man. It was like an old school '90s low scoring yeah. type of situation. It opened up pretty good for me. I saw pick and roll between Randall and Mitch. Mitch yep. You, you figured okay. This might be the way that Fish is trying to solve the spacing issues, keeping people honest. Mm-hmm. When Mitch lobs, and it seemed like he was working. Julius Randle ended up with seven with seven assists because of it. So that was good. But then at the end of the day, Randall goes ISO still, and it looked a little more under control. And maybe because he picked the role of Mitchell in the, in the beginning, there was yeah. less double teams, but he was still turning the ball over. Facts. It it was almost like the gift and a curse. You know what I mean? I I looked at it like. Every time he tried to be a playmaker and it actually worked, it was actually more cringeworthy for me because I'm like, they, he's they're gonna keep going to it, and, and, <laughs> and at the at the wrong times it's gonna break down, and that's exactly what happened, man. Uh, you know, listen, the first half out there it was a defensive gritty game, defensive yeah. gritty game. Both teams were missing shots, and we were right there, right there at the half, right there neck and neck. You saw Frank. Frank was in there hitting his buckets, finished the half mm-hmm. with seven points. He had a nice little buzzer beater. Okay, cool. Uh, another bright bright spot to me was Mitch. Thought Mitch had his best half of a game. I hope yeah. you know. Let's see him put two halves together. He had his sure. best one half together for sure. Uh, finished the game with twelve points, uh, a couple block shots, about three block shots in the in the first half alone. So Mitch was good. Yeah. They made an adjustment, though. They made an adjustment for that pick and roll. They and did. They crowded mitts, so that lob wasn't there anymore like it was in the first they half. They did. And, and give credit, um, Jonathan Isaac is a hell of a defender. Hell of a defender. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's on my fantasy basketball team, actually. So, um, <laughs> hell of a defender. Uh, Magic had, they got a lot of length on that team between him, Mo Bamba out there, damn, his arms damn near touching the floor. You know, right. they're, they're, they're very, you know, scrappy defensive team, no doubt about it. Uh, we had Amino out there looking like Charles Barkley, but that's another thing. Yeah. Um, second half now, our third quarter of doom always hurts us. We let them go out to a 9-2 run to start the third quarter. Yeah, we're usually good at the third quarter. We've been good in the third quarter so far, except yeah. for today. Um, and Isaac, Grant, Mitch was playing pretty good defense. Isaac was just making decisive moves. Yeah. But then um, we got lazy sometimes covering that three-point line. And That's right. And- Kind of ran away from us. That's right. I mean, I mean, they they gave Fultz his confidence back all in one game. Mike Mark Hel- <laughs> Mark Hel- Fultz is back, baby, on the oh, strength yeah. of the Knicks. First you know, game. like a first round. I'm game. telling you, they brought him back to his old self. They they, they even brought Michael Carter Williams out, out out from the dead. They dug him up from the grave. Man, all the all of the first rounders came back. That, yeah, bro. Yeah, Michael, just not for Halloween, like it's thriller. Michael Carter Williams got ten lives. Forget nine lives, man. <laughs> that boy got ten lives, man. Hats off to him. You know, he's still trying to grind it out and, and survive in the league. So, but you know, they, we get off to that nine nine two deficit to start the third, and it's just like here we go again, crawling from behind, crawling from behind. Um, and we battle back. We battle back on the strength of Frank and Kev. Yeah. To get back into that game. The second unit in the second half, sparked by Frank and Kevin Knox, brought us back into the game. I thought Kev had some excellent looks once again from three. Frank got after it on the defensive end. Mm-hmm. Was able to to, to uh, uh, force the Magic into some tough shots deep into the shot clock. Got him to turn the ball over and, and made a good pass to Bobby Portis uh, to put us up one. Yeah. With eight minutes to go. Yeah, man, the second unit, the second unit doing it, man. I feel like it's a few times where the second unit has kind of provided the spark yeah, uh, uh, that we need. It makes you kind of think, how long can this first unit stay together the way it is? Because it seems like the second unit just keeps 
you know, punching guys in the mouth and, and bringing our team out the doges. That that's right, man. And but from that eight minute mark, bro, we scored three points to close the game. <laughs> we scored three <laughs> points from eight minute mark until the end. And once again, the ball just stuck terribly. Terribly, man. The the point guard issue really reared its head today, man. For one, because RJ didn't have it tonight. Can we can we give RJ the, the night off tonight? He, he didn't have it tonight. I'll give, I mean, I'll give him a bone, man. He didn't have it tonight. Let's say you. I'm not mad at RJ. Like he he's been sub. He's been he hasn't been human so far. Facts, <laughs> facts. Yeah, I, I'll give I'll give RJ the night off tonight, man. He, you know what facts. I mean? He didn't have it. He didn't have it. He didn't have it. We had 19 assists, seven from your power forward. And Marcus Morris, no surprise, has zero. That's right. Well, That's right. <laughs> and with and with that, we didn't have DSJ, we didn't have Peyton, we don't have Kadeem Allen, so we went with a starting lineup of RJ and Ellington at the one-two. Um, right. Wasn't that great, you know? Ellington had a couple buckets here and there. He was okay. RJ finished with um, uh, nine points, two dimes. Like I said, it really wasn't his night tonight. Between nah. Isaac's good defense, and I just thought you know RJ was was a bit tired. Um, yeah. You know, we didn't have it. And then down the stretch, what ended up happening was two things. I think Frank, he he's not a full-time facilitator. Right. In that he when we needed him to be going north and south, he's still going east and west. Yeah, there's he needs to that's the next step because he, he gets in the game and he's super aggressive. He's He's trying to low by people, and then I feel like, especially with the starters, yeah, I feel like he defers a lot. He defers with Randall, and, right? And, and, and sometimes you gotta choose not to defer. That's it. And do what was working for you in the first half. Yeah, and, and so I think that was part of the problem because then you you had lineups in the fourth quarter. The one lineup where they had it was Frank Kev. Then you had Portis, uh, uh, Randall, and Morris. It was that was an atrocious lineup, JL. I'm sorry, man. They, yeah. they, they cannot, I keep saying, first of all, you cannot have Kevin Knox at the two. Enough with that experiment, man. Yeah, when, man. when Fizz first said that, I was like, okay, he, he's joking. But he really went to this, and he's gone yeah, to it yeah. more more than once, J.L. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, he likes length paws. Like, he, he said that since he's got here, he wanted, he envisioned this whole tall lineup that, for no. position as basketball. No. But no. you forget for positionless basketball, you need people who are actually mobile no. enough to play out of position. Yes. And, mm-hmm. and so the the issue is, is that you have Frank out there with the four big men. Nobody's moving. And yes, nope. I somebody in the chat said, yes, Frank can create. He can move the ball. Yes, he does. But you need the rest of the guys to do the same. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Somebody got to move. Somebody has to move. Move the ball and move themselves. And when you have Randall Morris... And then Portis, that is, is atrocious. You cannot have that. To be honest with you, JLS, at that moment, even though he didn't play, I would have thrown ISO out there right then and there because you know he can get cooking right away. Yeah. Right away. In the move. We need a dribble penetration, man, and RJ didn't have it. I would have went to ISO next. Yeah. I would have went to ISO next, man, because we needed the offense, and, and who knows? He might have gotten out there and made some plays for everybody else. Yeah. Who knows? Like that was definitely missing. At Frank did pretty well in the first half, but there was yeah. certain parts of the game. He's like, all right, we need more from this position, it, or we at least need somebody to set some picks and, and move off the ball to get in position to right. make a, a decent pass. It, it was missing. It was just missing in crunch time. You know what I mean? And once again, it's another uh, pressure situation, crunch time situation where we came up empty. And right. be, because of the lack of trust, because of the the lack of effective <laughs> point guard play down the stretch. You have Julius once again trying to do too much. Trying mm-hmm. to do too much. I don't yeah. need him playing point forward every time, JL. Couple sets here and there, okay. Yeah. Couple sets here, but in crunch time, when you know he doesn't have the hands for it, know he doesn't have the handles for it, that's a recipe for disaster, bro. I'm sorry. He, he needs to practice. Before I see that damn spin move again, he needs to practice that. Like, I don't want to see, I don't understand how many times he lost the ball. Doing that same spin move every game at the end of the game, like just just yeah, just practice that at home first on the court, and then bring it back. At the end of the game, you're supposed to bring out your go-to move. Yeah, the one that you know works. Right. 
I don't know if that's the go-to, my, my guy. Why, I don't know. Why not a pick and roll with, with Frank and Randall? Why not run a pick know. and roll with him? I don't understand. I don't why, why is he the initiator of the pick and roll all the time? Why not run a pick and roll for him? I don't know. Why not pick and roll with RJ and Randall? Like, right, or RJ the, and Randall. The pick, the pick and roll with RJ and Randall worked during the Bulls game. So why right. didn't he try this game? Uh, I'm, I'm at a, I'm at a because, loss. Because I know Frank, they might sag off of Frank. Hope, and maybe That's true. He... He he was scared to shoot it when he's scared to shoot it with Randall and Morris in the game for some reason. Um, he's he when Knox is there, he's, he'll shoot it. Whatever he needed but, um, to yeah. freeze Morris, man. Morris, cause he's yeah. I don't think Morris has passed it since game one, bro. Nah, <laughs> Real no. talk, man. No, I don't I don't think Mook. Hey, listen, that's my guy. We picked him to start. We said it. It yeah, makes sense for him to start. But now he that did. we're looking at this, you, him and Randall do not work, and especially when you don't have a point guard out there, it's not gonna work, man. It's it's not gonna work. It's too much hero he, ball he, going on out he, there. Either Fizz has to coach him, because it seems like, I mean, it seems like Fizz is coaching Randall, right? Because. Mm-hmm. We, we see Randall is starting to respond. Seven assists today. Start off the game just feeding Mitch. So you, and it, it helped. It helped Randall at least get some iso ball where he's one on one towards the end of the game. So Randall is being receptive to the coaching. Yeah. Morris. I'm not sure. I don't know. What he somebody has to hit him over the head. Keith yeah. Smart. Ran, Morris <laughs> somehow is not being receptive to, to the coaching. Maybe he needs to sit down for a minute, even though he's probably promised a starting position. Maybe he needs to sit down and think about it. Yeah, and, and how about um, how about Fizz after after Portis hit that three with eight minutes left? He tried like a step back fadeaway, and you could hear Fizz on the mic saying, "No hero ball, no hero ball." <laughs> the your yeah, hero man. in the Chicago game, I, I told you, man. Let me see him put two solid games together. He was all right. He wasn't terrible. I thought he had some pretty decent defense down the stretch. But yeah. um, you know that that's just that's just I, I the epitome of our offensive futility tonight, man. It's just too yeah, much. Yeah, man. Too much. Need to, these guys just have to listen, cause I, I, cause you know what, Fizz is telling them he's going. Fizz is going to the media and saying these guys need to learn to trust each other. These yeah. guys need to trust each other. Ball these guys sticking. Ball sticking. Ball sticking. Ball sticking. These yeah. Ball sticking. Yeah. At some point, the guys on the floor have to listen. <laughs> Yeah, they have to listen. Like time to execute, and not and especially to the end of games. Don't play that hero ball like you said in the end of games. Execute. Yeah. Keep running the damn offense. Uh, I'm telling you, man. Like I said, even though it was late in the game, I think you probably would have been better off going with ISO. Move Kev to the three, and, and slide Morris back to the bench, and, and leave it with Randall and Mitch. I w- yeah. I would have ran Frank. I mean, or no, you have RJ out there, right? So I would have ran. You probably did, you probably could have taken Frank out at that point. I would have ran RJ, ISO, Kev, uh, Randall, Mitch. That's probably yeah. what I would have done. Yeah. Or if RJ didn't have it tonight, you go Frank, ISO, Knox, Randall, Mitch. If you put Frank in there, I need to talk to Frank like before the timeout. Like, listen, yeah. if they double Randall on the pick, shoot it. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and that's the thing. Like, you know, I thought... I, I, like I said, I think Frank gave us some pretty solid minutes um, in the backup duties, but in crunch time, we just needed him to be more aggressive, and he didn't give us that. Yeah, let's just exactly. let's just keep it a buck. Keep he, that same energy. He didn't. He didn't have that same energy. That first man. quarter. Yeah. When you yeah, when we was cheering, keep that. Don't don't lose that. Yeah. Don't lose that. And, and, and that was that because. Uh, you know, like I said, it forced Julius into hero ball, and that's just not where we want to be. Nope. That's just not where we want to be. You know, give credit to Julius. Um, other than all things considered, he had a fairly solid game. No, he did. He, like I said, he, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's what I'm saying. He had a fairly solid game. He, was, he wasn't bad. Um, but it was just, he, you know, even the turnovers were down, but it was just crunch time. Yeah. We, we have to find our identity in crunch time. We have to exactly. find it out there, and and um, you know, it, it's just doing too much. But even on the post game, admittedly, so he said, I, "I I'm not playing my best." <laughs> no, yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I mentioned in the beginning, like he seems like he's taking the coaching well. More passing to Mitch in the beginning. Um, the defense had to adjust to him. It opened up. It, it opened things up for him where he can go one on one. You saw that he was hitting those little baby jumpers, um, with single coverage because he was afraid. He was afraid of of him passing the ball, and it worked. Yeah, you just gotta, you know, 
You got to tighten certain things up at the, at the end of the games. Maybe not have Julius Randle just go straight up one-on-one hero ball at the end. That's it. That's it, man. I think another thing that also doomed us was um, the second chance points. Like, we just, oh, yeah. ev- they got every bounce their yeah. way. Yeah. They got every bounce their way uh, going the other way. And, and I thought that that's what made the, the lead balloon even more in the fourth uh, to make the loss look even worse. You know, they yeah. had, every bounce went their way, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. We played great initial defense, but then we got caught ball watching. Yeah. As the shot was going up, yeah. instead of kind of finding your man and boxing out, it was, it was normally some guy who kind of flew from out the picture mm-hmm. to grab that rebound and then erase all the hard work you just did. True indeed. True indeed, man. So, you know, again, Jay Ellis, as we get closer to that tough stretch um, from November straight through to January, these type of games um, it, it are needed. You yeah. need you need to get these games to, to feel good about yourself be, mm-hmm. because uh, it, it's just not going to get no easier, man. Yeah, man, we got to be we have to beat these kind of middle of the road, lower teams to kind of gain some respect and get some momentum and build some confidence out here, man. Yeah. And I, w- I want like a, a wire to wire win for once or at least, you know. Yeah. Something like we, we've been coming from behind an awful lot. Too much too much so you know we have it in us we have it there if we keep coming back and keep coming back something is there where we just have to sustain that sustain that level of concentration for the entire 48 minutes agreed agreed um cam ctt good point you said if ellington doesn't have it why not put iso in and that's what i said when they announced that um that lineup today i said <laughs> you know what I don't have a problem with it for the simple fact that we need we could use Ellington shooting out there, no problem. Yep. Frank, I still thought Frank was going to get ample opportunity to to put his stamp on the game, and I thought he did at Spurs. I said, listen, if Ellington doesn't have it, I'll I'm going dot or I'm going ISO, and he and they went with dot tonight. Dot didn't have it; hasn't he hasn't really looked good at all since he's been back. But he hasn't really played that much, no fair. Yeah. So. You know, gotta get, gotta get into a kind of a rhythm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So listen, this is this is this is tough for the coach. He's gonna have to figure it out. Um, but you gotta find a way to get ISO in there, especially when this team's struggling.